Father, we come right now. God, I present myself as a living sacrifice. Because I realize it is your anointing that you bring down that will destroy yours. It is the gifting that you give that shall build up the body of Christ. It is your Holy Spirit that will reveal the truth to your people. It's by your hand, God, that only mighty work shall be done. It's only by your voice that anything shall be established. It is only your grace and mercy that allow me to stand in this place right now. So God, none of me but all to thee. All the glory and all the honor belongs to thee. I humbly submit myself to your spirit right now. Mm. I'm not going to say decrease me, but God remove me right now. Yes, God. And let only your glory reign in this place. Let only your voice be heard throughout this area. I love you, Lord. I thank you. I honor you. And I bless you. In Jesus' name, amen. This morning, I want to look at Exodus 14. And verses 13 and 14. And read as follows. And Moses said unto the people, Fear ye not, stand still, and see the salvation of the Lord, which he will shew to you today. For the Egyptians whom you have seen today, ye shall see them again, no more, forever. The Lord shall fight for you, and you shall hold your peace. And some translations said, you know, you just stay, God will fight, you just stay still. And so, on that, today, God said to bring forth for you to understand true deliverance. All right. All right. Deliverance, in the definition I look up, it says, to carry and turn over to the intended recipient, to give birth, transfer, or exchange. Salvation is the act of saving or protecting saving from condemnation, penalty of death. Now, I want those two words to just resonate in your spirit right now. I'm not going to expound. Later on, I will expound. But to get word to God want me to get, want it just establish what you, deliverance and salvation. Because sometimes we put those two words together and they're not the same. Well, I was thinking to say true deliverance and I, a little bit on this, I call it deliverance of chaos on New Year's Eve. And every year, now I'm gonna speak with myself, you can join in if you agree. But every year, I know I did. I declare a new resolution. If y'all with me? Or it's a new season. Or a new beginning. Or I might just say it's a new me. So when we talk about resolution. Resolution is something that you resolve or fix or settle. It can be different. Mm -hmm. But when I look back every year after I say I have a new resolution, midway through the year, when I look back, there's nothing resolved, there's nothing fixed, yeah. and I have to settle with that. Yeah. Everything is still the same. Uh -huh. When I say it's a new season, I look at what is the season. A season is a year, period of the year characterized by certain conditions. We have about four seasons winter, spring, summer, and fall. Uh -huh. But as we see in this age, in this time, our seasons are confused. Because I don't know what you can Sometimes winter feels like summer, right. and sometimes summer feels like winter. Yes. And just like that, our lives can be confused in mid year of a new year. When I say a new beginnings, what is beginning? is to commence, to start, to proceed to perform the first or earliest part of some action, to originate. So many declare a new beginning because somewhere else, my subconscious, I know that it has to be better than this. I, I know this ain't all to my life. So I am declaring I have a new beginning. But then, somewhere mid-year to year, I look around. 
and I'm getting the same thing that I got from the last year. I'm doing the same thing I did last year. Am I by myself? No. no. And then, this is my favorite one, it's a new me. That's an easy one. You know, I make the new year resolution because in the tent and turn that things will be different in Nene's life. I said new season, I get that song, it's a new season, you know, I got prosperity, and I grasp that thing, and it's gonna be a new begin um, new season, and a new beginning. I said everything will start new for Nene. I'm gonna just I'm gonna like the people on their models, I'm gonna just get in shape, I'm gonna work out, I'm gonna walk, and then I ain't walked no further than I did the year before. <laughs> I eat the same, the very more of the wrong things that they did the year before. And so everything looks the same. You know, now now I might not have the same issue that I had last year, but guess what? I got an issue. I may not have the same dilemma that I had last year, but guess what? I got a dilemma. I may not have the same cares that I had last year, but everybody know you're gonna have a kid. Nevertheless, I'm stuck. I'm by myself. You know, I'm, I'm stuck in my mind, my attitude, my behaviors, my belief, the way I'm just stuck. And the product of me being stuck, I'm saying me. I start complaining. I whine. I get frustrated. I murmur. I'm disgusted. I'm fearful. And I'm living life beneath my potential. <coughs> Am I by myself? No. Yeah, so I, y'all both. So it is, but I need a true deliverance. Yeah. And so I know God has saved me. I have no question about that. But I'm having a hard time of being truly delivered. Okay. And so I'm going to compare the Israelites with us. Okay? You know, I'm going to see that this situation agree with us, because go to Ecclesiastes 1.9. It says this, the thing that hath been, it is that which shall be, and that which is done is that which shall be done, and there is no new thing under the sun. Right. So that tells me what the Israelites went through, I'm going through. All right. And guess what? Next generation might go through. So there's nothing new under the sun. So I look back at the Israelites and the point they are in the exodus. They are now about to leave. The point where I read, to the scripture I read to you for chapter 14, the plagues and everything in Egypt have passed. Pharaoh is now letting God's people go. And now they're on their way. This exodus means a new resolution. This exodus means a new season, a new beginning, and a new me for every individual. Now God has saved the Israelites from total destruction. They have had the blood of the lamb over the doorposts, and now they're exiting out. They've been saved. We have been saved because the precious blood of the lamb has been shed for us. So we, if those that accept it, have been saved. Amen. Now, they were ready for deliverance. The resolution had been set. God had already resolved and fixed everything for them. They were in a new season, a season of liberty. Yes. They had a new beginning. They were having a great journey with their God. And the new me, they were no longer slaves, but they were free men and free women. Amen. So they were coming on out. But midway, in the deliverance, they became stuck. Right. Mm -hmm. They reverted back to their original thought process of slave mentality. Go to Exodus um, 14, we're looking at it, this time at verses 10 to 12. And it says, when Pharaoh drew nigh, the children of Israel lifted up their eyes, and behold, the Egyptians marched after them. And they were sore afraid, and the children of Israel cried out unto the Lord, and they said unto Moses, Because there was no graves in Egypt, hast thou taken us away to die in the wilderness? Wherefore have, hast thou dealt with us, dealt thus with us, thus with us, ooh, to carry us forth out of Egypt? 
Is not this the word, word that we did tell the Egypt, saying, let us alone, that we may serve the Egyptians? For it had been better for us to serve the Egyptians, Egyptians than that we should die in the wilderness. What? Tongue tied that <laughs> Amen. Now, when we read this, when I read it, and yeah, I've learned this, anybody learn the Ten Commandments, all you know this little story to leave it. We're quick to condemn the Israelites. You're right. But I'll beat them up for just like God just brought them all that and look at how they act. But let's stop for a minute. Uh-huh. And look at the situation. Now I'm gonna ask some help here. Now I'm not good on directions, okay, but y'all work with me. I, I okay, which way is east? Right, you know east. Okay, pass John stand up. Pastor John's going to represent east. This way. Which way? That way over there? This east? Okay. Okay. Can I make it to my own? Because I'm confused. <laughs> I don't know. Okay, we'll just be east. Okay, y'all. Pastor, you be east right here. I, don't, I, I'm, I need you to look at me. Okay. You east. Yeah, I want you, okay. No, I want, I want you north. Can I make it north? Yeah, I'm in my own. I'm, no. Nigga, I'm, I'm doing my own north. This is north, okay? This is north. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm gonna can get a little messed up. With this. this is north, okay? Now, I need uh, somebody to be south up here. Come on, big guy. You try it. Oh, you you south? Okay. We're east. I'm gonna be east. I need you to be east. And and still be west. He's east. <laughs> <That's all right. laughs> if I'm north and she's south, he, he's next to it. Y'all got it? Yeah. Yeah. That's all. Y'all, y'all got it. North, south, east, west. Do it again. North, south, east, west. Okay, now I'm probably confused in a minute, but y'all work with me. Okay? All right. Now, in the north of the Israelites, they had just left Egypt. And when they left, you know, Pharaoh changed his mind. So Pastor Johnson is going to be Pharaoh up the north. And all of you will be the Egyptians. Okay? All right. You had a whole army. So all of you are going to be it. Now, the north, the Egyptians, the Pharaoh represent oppression and trouble for the Israelites. Now, I'm going to make it for us today. For me, the Pharaoh in my life has been relationships. What I mean by that, bad relationships that oppress me. And then the Egyptians that help were those demonic spirits, Uh (coughs) such as bitterness, hatred. Are you with me? Yes. And all these evil. So they're coming at, they're oppressing me. And, 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 and so this is the north. So when I'm leaving, when I turn around in my life, the thing that I want to get away from, that had kept me down, it could be finances. I don't know, look at your finances. It could be you, you got a great big, you don't have much money. Pharaoh, it's something that'll hold to your money. Uh-huh. And all these demonic things are coming, it's taken away from your finances. So you oppress. Y'all with me? Yeah. That's the north of you. And, and then the south and the west, that's west, right? Yeah. The west and south of the Egyptian, of the Israelites, were mountains. All right. Okay? Yeah. I'm glad you're making it shorter. You have these mountains. And so you realize when you're in a, a predicament, you're right in the middle. To the north of me, I had that thing that I thought I got away from All right. coming out. And every spirit that was holding me down with it is right along. Right. And I can see it. Then to the west and south of me are mountains. Now, I, maybe I could get over them. I don't know, but anybody ever been in a rut that you want to get up, but you can't get up? And even the mountains were hard, but on the other side of the mountain were the Philistines. There were these people that the Israelites didn't want to walk with. Because they weren't ready. So it's those things that, okay, uh, if I run from the north and I go west and south, there's the mountains 
And then plus that's the enemy on the other side of the mountain. That means it's that if I'm in a relationship, I leave this one, and then I decide to go to that one, and then that one is, uh, you know, people will press you down. You try to go for help, and nah, uh uh that, that one is those people or, or, or those situations that I think I can climb, but it's always something or someone. I can't get up there. So it's like right in the middle, and then that's north. Pharaoh, and all the Egyptians, that thing that held me down, west and south. The mountains, maybe I can get up. That's one thing, maybe I can get up. And if I do get over, then I got those people that I got a war against. And then, to the east of me, is a sea. Now, come on. I got the sea. And, and the sea showed me that I could drown. If I don't know how to swim. Mm -hmm. Did anybody, have you ever had a situation? You gave it this one. Okay. A situation, bills, relationships, whatever it may be. You feel like you're drowning? Yeah. It's like, I, I, I'm ahead just above the water, but the water is still rising up. Uh -huh. Now, if anybody ever seen a sea, a sea is too deep for me to drive. Yeah. And it's not a narrow, but it's wide. Yeah. So if I could swim, and I get in there and try to go across, sooner or later, guess what's going to happen? I'm going to get so tired, I'm going to give up. Uh -huh. And so I'm standing in the middle, and everywhere I look, north, east, south, and west, uh -huh. there's trouble. Mm -hmm. I can't see. Like, I cannot see how I'm going to be delivered from all of this, because mm -hmm. I'm stuck right. right in the middle. Am I by myself? No. You right. that. Thank you, East, West, South, and North, <laughs> and all the Egyptians. So when I look at, <laughs> when I look at the Israelites, and look at myself, we're stuck. Now, when we get stuck, one of the first things they did is that they cried out, to their Lord. Uh -huh. And don't we do that? Yes. Lord have mercy. Mm -hmm. right Lord help me. Mm -hmm. Lord, where are you? Um, yeah. All right. We cried out. We did. But in that same hour, it might be the same minute that they cried out, they end up turning right around, Come on. complaining, uh, murmuring, whining. Do that stuff for me. We ask God to save us or deliver us, to get us out of this. And if he doesn't move as quickly as we think he should, uh -huh. or if he doesn't do what we thought he should have done, the way we think he should have done, then we start whining. Right. We start complaining. Why me? How did I get here? I thought. Why would it happen this way? Where are you? You know, you complain about the people you're around. And then, not only the ground, but then you have others, you go find others that will complain, whine, and run with you. 